Hello and welcome to the next installment of our technical how-to video series. As you know, Object First Ubi is the best storage for Veeam. And all the way up until today, Veeam has historically been a Windows-only application. But new with version 13, there's some interesting things coming down the pipe that might allow Veeam to run on a different operating system. So I'm joined today by my esteemed colleague, Jeff Burke, once again, to give us a sneak peek into Veeam backup and replication version 13. Jeff, tell us what's new. Well, so I am extremely excited. And you know, I'm never excited about anything, but I'm extremely excited about this because even way back in 2016, 2017, I had a dream and a lot of other people had a dream about Veeam being on Linux for a lot of reasons, not that we don't like Windows or anything, but sometimes it's a question of you know extra licenses. Some shops have Linux experts who know Windows, but not enough, let's say, to feel confident on it. There's a lot of reasons. And so we had always kind of dreamed about this, to have this kind of versatility. And with Veeam, as you know, they always respond to customers. If they hear that a customer needs something, you can bet your dollar that in just a few years or months, it'll be implemented, which is incredible. Uh, and so, the interesting thing I've got today is what I've said, Veeam on Linux. We uh, have been given a pre-release copy of Veeam 13. So this is way before anything comes out, just to look at it. And so we are gonna show it to you today. Now, I'm gonna switch to my desktop. And the first thing you'll notice is, well, okay, Jeff, it's on Linux. Like, what do you mean? Is there like a UI or... So first and foremost, the Veeam VBR Server 13, which is on Linux, and by the way, they will continue to have a Windows box as well. It's not like they're gonna throw all the Windows users out to you know, the open ocean or something. Windows will also continue, uh, but the Veeam Linux box will look something like this. So first of all, the actual Veeam VBR server is gonna be in a GUI-less server, like many Linux servers are, and here it is. This is, in this little box, which I've connected through Secure Shell uh, using PowerShell, is the VBR server, okay? So, I mean, if you love the command line, you can probably do a lot of things in there. I don't know whether this will be hardened later on. I suspect it might be. Again, this is a pre-release, so don't take everything up like this is gonna be exactly the way it's gonna look. Um, but that, in a sense, is in an essence, is what you've got as far as the Veeam server. So what do you do then? Well, with VBR 13, if you decide to go the Linux route, you will have a Linux server, and then you will install the console as an EXE on a Windows box to access it, okay? Now, I don't know what their plans are gonna be, whether it'll be a web UI or whether it'll be a Linux also UI. I'm just not certain about that right now. But what I have right now is the Veeam server on a Linux uh, GUI-less server, and I have this. I installed it, EXE, it was a very simple install, and this is how you're gonna connect. So I put my IP address in there. Um, so if you have multiple servers, like, in the console before, same thing, you'd have a drop down list and I'm gonna connect. Okay, and um, here we go, the moment of truth. And as you can see, I was not telling a fib, it's backup and replication 13, that's pretty quick. Um, okay, so what are the big differences? Well, I mean, there's not a lot of big differences. Remember, porting a program like VBR to another operating system is no small feat. I'm not a developer, but I've had developers port things to different operating systems. And I've heard them complain for a long time how difficult it is. So this in itself is the new thing and really a fantastic effort by Veeam. Again, to walk around a bit, there's nothing here that if you've used Veeam before is gonna be new to you or difficult. It's still intuitive. You can still right click and um, get the same view you had before. So really, you're all set if you wanna use this. Um, what I've done is I decided to set up a um, Hyper-V here to test with. I've got a Hyper-V with one little Ubuntu running in there. I went to repositories and I connected to an Oopi, obviously. Now you might ask Jeff, oh, wait a minute. Is that the same Oopi you're using for your, your real lab production? I call it my production. I say, yes. Oh, no, you don't have to worry. Why? Because in Oopi, you can create separate buckets and each bucket will be a separate repository, okay? This is something I love because when I managed Veeam servers for years, especially the early days, you know, you'd get one server and have like NTFS, REFS, or even a Linux box of XFS. 
and that box is one repository. So if you want another repository, guess what? You have to create an entirely new server, VM, whatever. Well, you shouldn't really do a VM security wise, but it's a lot of work. What I love about object storage, I create on one Ootby, five or 10 buckets. They can be different repositories and they can be linked to different VBRs. Okay, so I have no problems with them attacking one another and messing up, you know, when you upgrade to a different level. So this is Ootby. I did a backup job to test that it worked, and there it is. It worked. And again, there's nothing here which is, you know, different. Here's the backup. I want to restore. Instant recovery, instant disk recovery. It's everything you've seen before. So in that sense, there's nothing really new. Now, for people out there who are really good developers and no REST APIs, um, you can use something like a program like Meld, okay? Meld diff, and you can go into the swagger of the API. You can do that in your existing Veeam, and then you can download the JSON file. Um, and the JSON file is basically a list of everything that's in the API. And then what you can do is list, load them both into a program like Meld, the other programs too, and one side is the Veeam 12, as you can see, and the other side is the Veeam 13. And this program will, at a glance, show you the differences in the API. So if you want to know what's different, you go down at this level. Again, this is a pre-release, so like don't capture the screen, go, oh my goodness, look at that. This could all change. But keep in mind, you can do that, especially if you're a developer, this is very useful. So it's a program called Meldiff, it's open source. There are closed source ones, that have different uh, things you can do with them. But this is really where you see the differences in the API. Apart from that, Matt, I mean, do you have any questions about it? Again, I don't see anything myself that sticks out as brand new, apart from the fact that it's on Linux. Jeff, I absolutely love it. You know, I know back to your 2016 dream that you referenced, there's certainly been a lot of folks that have uh, partaken in that same dream that really want to see Beam ported over to Linux. I guess my big question for you is, you know, you mentioned the EXE for essentially the console view that's connecting to the Linux workhorse, the actual Linux VBR install. Is there a way to manage VBR on Linux without Windows at all? Good question. So I'm assuming, and again, this is all Jeff Burke's kind of like imagination, that you could theoretically just use the REST API. Um, so if you're a developer, you can, in REST API, create backups, you can run backups, so you can programmatically do it. It would be a big task. I mean, that's one of the reasons why they create these front ends for people like me, because you know, I would have to go back to university to learn all this stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm certain you can. I mean, you can do stuff from PowerShell as well. So once it's installed, it's it's a Veeam server. How you connect with it, what you do with it, you know, I think the majority of people are going to use, the, obviously, the, the console. It's just simple and quick. But yeah, I don't think there's anything stopping you to go in and use PowerShell, use the REST API. I think this is a great option for those that, that are Linux in-house experts, to your point, and are maybe trying to liquidate any type of Windows boxes that they may have. And to me, Jeff, it sounds like a perfect scenario where you would install that EXE on, let's say, your laptop, you know, that might be running Windows 11. And then you can simply remote into the Linux instance of backup and replication and do all your management there while keeping Veeam exclusively installed and operating in a Linux ecosystem. So I love this new development. You know, Veeam has never been one not to continue innovation. So it's really nice to see them listening to their customer feedback, as you mentioned earlier, making this port possible in V13. I can't wait to see the GA version of this once it goes live. Yeah, and I tell you, what I really like about it too is remember, uh, a GUI list server is using a lot less resources. So even back in the day when Windows introduced Windows Core, I started switching a lot of my proxies, my Veeam proxies to Windows Core because I didn't need a desktop for a proxy server. Um, so Linux goes the next level because you can really make it lean and mean. So this theoretically should allow you to use less compute and less resources in your data center. Theoretically, every situation is different, but I think it gives you more flexibility. And that's what people love Veeam for. You know, Jeff, this is awesome. Thanks so much for showing us all this great goodness of this pre-release of Veeam V13. I can't wait to see this go GA and live, and we'll be keeping our ears to those channels so that we can get our Object First Lab upgraded as soon as it's available, so that we can continue showing why Object First Ootby is the best storage for Veeam, and this time maybe on Linux. So until then, we'll see you guys on the next video.